After the first humans fall into sin in the Garden of Eden, death became the inevitable culmination of earthly existence, stripping away the promised immortality. Man's journey was now marked by birth, aging, and ultimately, demise. In response, God assigned an angel to oversee the transition from life to death and beyond. This angel, embodying both goodness and malevolence, is known as Azrael. Despite his title as the Angel of Death, Azrael defies expectations by assuming a compassionate role. He guides departing souls towards their next journey with empathy. It is believed that Azrael meticulously records every individual's life, inscribing their names at birth and erasing them at death. This duty bears resemblance to the concept of the Angel of Death in Judaic tradition. Azrael's portrayal varies across different faiths. Some envision him dwelling in the third heaven, a celestial realm shared by Judaism and Islam. In Islamic theology, Azrael holds significance as one of the principal angels, embodying the Quranic notion of the Angel of Death, akin to the Jewish concept of Malach Hamoth. The Hebrew name Azrael translates to Angel of God, or Help from God. While the angel Azrael is not found in the Hebrew Bible, and traditional Jewish teachings do not recognize him, there is a similar sounding figure named Azrael, mentioned in mystical Jewish texts like the Zohar, a part of Kabbalistic literature. Although absent from Jewish teachings, the name Azrael carries the Hebrew meaning of, the one whom God helps. Archaeological findings in Jewish communities in Mesopotamia, such as an Aramaic incantation bowl dating back to the 7th century, indicate historical usage of this name. However, these ancient texts only list names, so direct connections to the concept of death in Judaism remain elusive. With the emergence of Islam, the name Azrael gained prominence in both Christian and Islamic narratives. In the Ethiopic version of the Apocalypse of Peter from the 16th century, the name appears as Ezrael. Here, Azrael is depicted as an angel of hell seeking justice for the injustices faced by individuals during their lives. In Islam, Azrael holds a revered position among the four principal archangels, alongside Gabriel, Michael, and Israfil. His duty involves delicately guiding departed souls from their earthly vessels. However, Azrael does not act independently, his actions are solely prompted by divine decree, marking the appointed time for a soul's departure. Surah 32 11 in the Quran makes reference to the angel of death. Interpretations by modern Islamic scholars, including those from esteemed institutions like Imam Muhammad ibn Sa'd Islamic University in Yemen and Mauritania, suggest that the angel of death receives assistance from other celestial beings in the soul-taking process. These interpretations propose the existence of additional angels who collaborate with Azrael, aiding him in fulfilling his duties. Tafsir al-Badawi further elaborates on a group of subordinate angels operating under Azrael's authority. The 8th Umayyad Caliph, Umar ibn Abd al-Aziz, offered insights on Azrael, remarking on the ease with which the angel takes countless lives. He likened humanity's insignificance to a dish on a plate from Azrael's perspective. Al-Qurtubi, drawing upon Mujahid ibn Jabr, delved into the analogy of the world as a vessel in Azrael's grasp. Mujahid portrayed Azrael's capacity to gather numerous souls at once, facilitated by God's design of rendering the earth seemingly diminutive, akin to a vessel cradled between his hands. Zuhair ibn Muhammad echoed a similar perspective. It is also recounted that when unbelievers in hell implore for aid, an angel, sometimes associated with Azrael, manifests to remind them of their eternal torment. Moreover, various Quranic verses allude to a multitude of angels of death. Modern scholars have compiled classical interpretations regarding the angel of death's role during the Battle of Badr, as mentioned in Quran chapter Al-Anfal verse 50, Quran 850. These interpretations suggest that during the Battle of Badr, the angel of death had specific responsibilities as outlined in the Quranic verse. According to tradition, approximately 40 days before a person's passing, God releases a leaf from a heavenly tree beneath his throne. On this leaf, Azrael reads the name of the individual whose soul he is destined to escort. 
Classical interpretations depict Azrael as resembling a blue-colored ram adorned with numerous eyes scattered across its form. It's believed that if the earth were placed upon his shoulder, it would seem as diminutive as a bean in an open field. Azrael is depicted as possessing 4,000 wings, classified into two types, wings of grace and wings of punishment. The latter are described as crafted from iron rods, hooks, and scissors. According to Mukadil Ibn Sulaiman's work, as Sulik, Azrael possesses 70,000 limbs for his feet. Umar Ibn Abd al Aziz, a notable caliph of the Umayyad dynasty, relayed a narration illustrating the angel of death, Malik al Mat, wielding a flaming whip. Additionally, he shared another account describing the angel of death as so immense that he surpasses even the bearers of the throne, a group of angels known for their significant stature. In the Islamic Book of Dead, the angel of death is depicted with four faces, and his entire body is adorned with eyes and tongues, corresponding to the number of humans on earth. A well-known story found outside the Quran concerning the creation of Adam involves the angel of death. Various Muslim scholars have documented this tale, which recounts how when God commanded the archangels to gather dust from the earth to create Adam, only Azrael succeeded. Consequently, he was appointed to oversee matters of life and death, emphasizing the intimate connection between the two. Various narratives explore the relationship between Azrael and death, presenting differing perspectives. Some scholars propose that Azrael and death are synonymous, while others suggest they are distinct entities, with death acting as a tool wielded by Azrael to fulfill the task of taking life. One account delineates death's creation and its connection to Azrael as initially separate beings. When God formed death, he instructed the angels to observe it, causing them to lapse into unconsciousness for a thousand years. Upon awakening, death acknowledged its subservience to Azrael. This interpretation finds support among scholars who comment on a hadith indicating that death will manifest itself as a ram after Judgment Day, highlighting its differentiation from the angel Azrael. Another narration recounts how Azrael was granted the role of the angel of death as a reward for successfully procuring the earth from which Adam was fashioned. The conflation of death and the angel Azrael as a single entity is elucidated in a hadith found in Sahih Bukhari, as interpreted by the classical Hanafite scholar Badr al-Din al-Aini. According to this hadith, following Judgment Day, death will assume the form of a ram and be positioned between paradise and hell. God will then personally sacrifice the ram, causing death to cease to exist. This act marks the commencement of eternity for the denizens of both paradise and hell, with their fates becoming immutable thereafter. Scholars offer varying interpretations of this hadith. Some contend that the ram mentioned symbolizes the angel of death himself, while others perceive it as representing death's form in the afterlife. Another narrative from Mukadil Ibn Sulaiman suggests that Azrael and death are indeed indistinguishable. Mukadil reported that Azrael possesses numerous faces and hands corresponding to the number of living creatures on his body. Each of these faces and hands is linked to the life of a soul in the mortal realm. Consequently, when a face on Azrael's body fades away, the connected soul experiences death. A prevalent belief suggests that while ordinary individuals are attended to by lesser angels of death, saints and prophets have the privilege of encountering the archangel of death himself. It's believed that esteemed prophets such as Moses and Muhammad are graciously summoned by him, while saints are said to meet Azrael in forms of exquisite beauty. Legend holds that as Rumi approached death, he lay in his bed and encountered Azrael in a human guise. This belief extends to saints, who are thought to encounter Azrael prior to their actual passing, to prepare for the transition. Nasir Kusra, for instance, claimed to have conversed with Azrael in a dream, for warning him of his imminent demise. According to the teachings of Sufi teacher Al-Jili, Azrael manifests to the soul in a form aligned with its most profound metaphors. There exists a belief that the soul can challenge the angel of death, resisting its pull by questioning its seemingly arbitrary actions. In such instances, it is said that the angel of death returns to heaven to present evidence of adherence to divine instructions. The Islamic concept of Azrael, 
including narratives such as the Tale of Solomon, has been recognized in the United States since the 18th century, as observed by scholars like Gregory Sharp and James Harris. In Western adaptations, Azrael's physical depiction has been elaborated upon. For instance, poet Lee Hunt portrays Azrael clad in a black hooded cloak, reminiscent of the Grim Reaper despite lacking the iconic scythe. Henry Wadsworth Longfellow mentions Azrael as an angel of death in The Reaper and the Flowers, yet does not conflate him with Samuel, the angel of death in Jewish tradition, who is often depicted as a fallen and malevolent figure. I appreciate your viewing.